Hello everyone, um, in this video I'll be talking about meiosis. Um, before we start talking about meiosis, let's um, think about why we need meiosis in our body. We need meiosis in our body because, as you know, the other process, which is the mitosis, which is the cell division into two exactly identical cells with the same number of chromosomes, lead um, doesn't uh, change the number of chromosomes. So, when it comes to sexual reproduction, if we produced our gametes by mitosis, we would have 46 chromosomes in our gametes and when the gametes meet with the other partners gametes then we will get 92 which is uh, not possible this is why we need a process such as meiosis for sexual reproduction and for the production of the gametes meiosis is only production of gametes it doesn't result in a zygote that's another process or in a baby that's another process that's uh, fertilization so the, the definition of meiosis is the production of gametes which will have half the number of chromosomes now if we want to before uh, we start speaking about meiosis let's look at the differences between meiosis and mitosis in mitosis we have one cell division and this cell division gives two identical cells. In meiosis we have two cell divisions. The first one to give two cells, then these two cells each one divides into two to give four cells. We say four haploid cells because they have half the number of chromosomes. They both undergo DNA replication in the S phase, the synthesis phase, but here they double their DNA then they split into two so that keeps the same number of DNA here they double their DNA then they split twice which uh, will result in half the number of DNA or half the number of chromosomes so in humans we will have 46 chromosomes here and 46 here and 46 here this one splits into two they are exactly identical here we start off with 46 and directly these 46 will end up with haploid chromosome uh, haploid cells which means they have half number of chromosomes or 23 chromosomes how do these go back to the diploid stage that's fertilization the gamete from this let's say this is a male so these would be sperm cells and the egg from the other partner which will be holding 23 when they join together they'll go back to 46 but and that's the first cell called zygote which will grow into an embryo which will grow into a baby and this baby will have half of his chromosomes from the father and half of his chromosomes from the mother this is how we look like both our mothers and fathers fathers now if we look at the detailed steps of meiosis so let's say we have a cell that's still an interface the germ cell which will undergo meiosis and it has four um, let me throw it bigger okay. so this is the cell bef before uh, dividing or before starting meiosis it has um, let's show four chromosomes since I cannot show uh, more than that so let's call this a and this a prime or a1 a2 and b and b prime okay now these two chromosomes are homologous chromosomes and these two are other homologous chromosomes after the dna replication so it goes through interface g1 as g2 the chromosomes each chromosome becomes like this so we still have four chromosomes but now they are each one formed of two sister chromatids attached in the middle which is the centromere so now s phase happened and this is after s phase of course inside the cell inside the nucleus we will have these now we can call this a and this a prime even though it holds two a's now so a a a prime a prime b b b prime b prime so the sister chromatids are exactly identical the homolux chromosomes are similar but not identical they contain the same genes but not the same alleles 
which we'll see we will see in the heredity lessons okay so we start the meiosis by prophase one so since we have two divisions we will have prophase metaphase and a phase telophase just like mitosis but two of them um, so prophase one the cell what happens in the cell is that the nucleus starts to disappear the centrioles start to make spindle fibers and the chromosomes condense so before prophase actually what I drew before isn't uh, accurate before prophase the chromosomes are decondensed and we cannot see them here they condense and one more difference that doesn't occur in mitosis is that the chromosomes the homologous chromosomes bind together so if this is the A, this is the A prime, prime, B, B prime. They bind together and they form what we call tetrads, or uh, sometimes called bivalents. This formation of tetrads is uh, is very important because this will cause in the first division the homologous to split the homologous chromosomes to split not the sister chromatids just like mitosis and once these form we might have crossing over crossing over um, is the splitting or uh, is the exchange of pieces of the chromosome so one piece of the a prime will go sit on the a and the a will sit on the A prime. Now, how will this affect the results? We'll see in the end, and that will be more relevant in the heredity lessons. Then we come to metaphase two, uh, metaphase one. We're still in metaphase one, where the the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. But here it's not sing single chromosomes, it's the tetrads that line up. And the spindle fiber attached, so if we look at mitosis, in mitosis we have the, uh, sp the chromosome lining up like this, and the spindle fiber attaching to each sister chromatid, so that when they split, they will split each sister chromatid apart. This doesn't happen in meiosis 1. In meiosis 1, since we have tetrads, the spindle fiber attached to each homologous chromosome which will split the homologous chromosome and keep the sister chromatids attached so this is what will happen now in anaphase 1 so in anaphase 1 now we have the homologous chromosome split and once we split the homologous chromosomes we've turned into a haploid cell so the A and the A prime have split and the B and the B prime have split. Now it doesn't have to be necessarily this way, so it doesn't have to the A goes with the B and the A prime with the B prime. We might have, so it's this or this, we might have the A goes to the same side as the B prime and the, oops, the A prime with the B. It all depends how did they line up on in the middle. And this chances, yani, if we go on with this, we get types of gametes. And if we go on with this, we get different types of gametes. So that increases the types of gametes that we can get. And we call this independent assortment. Independent assortment is this chances. Now we're speaking of uh, four chromosomes and we get two chances. If we're speaking of 23 pairs, then we can have, we'll have millions and millions of chances of aligning them. And that increases variety in, in species that reproduce uh, sexually. After that we will um, we will have telophase occurring, so let's go with the one that okay. we have the A and the B and the A prime and the B prime, and of course, there's still sister chromatids. And then cytokinesis occurs, and we'll have two cells 
which will continue may uses to may uses to happens the same thing pro phase two where they just condense and they prepare and the centrioles make the spindle fibers and then what we care about is metaphase two where in each cell they line up in the middle the chromosomes line up in the middle and here they line up just like mitosis so like this and the spindle fiber attaches to each sister chromatid so the a and the b and the same here the a prime and the b prime we might have it differently because of independent assortment but we went into this we took this example now now in anaphase 2 the, the sister chromatids will split so anaphase 2 is the one that's more similar to mitosis so in anaphase 2 now the sister chromatids have split and now we have a here and a there b here b there the same in the other cell Two, B prime, B prime, and A prime, A prime. Then these will split, by, will constrict by telophase, and then cytokinesis, and then they will give us four cells having each two chromosomes. If you see in the beginning, the two uh, are identical, and then the other two are identical. But all of them are not identical to each other. And here A prime, B prime. If you look at the beginning, we started off with four chromosomes. We ended up each one having two. Well, that means haploid cells. And these are the gametes. So if we started with 46, we will end up with chromosomes having 23. Now, because of independent assortment, these are not the only types of gametes. So if this is in a male, these are not the only types of sperm he produces. He might produce the A, B, and the A prime, B prime. But if we went into, if we had a different meiosis where A lined up with B prime, he'll produce A, B prime, and A prime, B. That makes four types of chromosomes. If we have 46 chromosomes, then it will, the possibilities are millions of possibilities to produce. And this, we're not speaking about crossing over where we might have a piece of the A included here and a piece of the A prime on the A chromosome. And we might not have it, which increases the, the num uh, types of gametes given um, thousands of times more. And other than that, we, ha we do not know which sperm will fertilize which egg and we cannot choose which makes it impossible for two siblings or two brothers or two sisters to have the same exact DNA or accept identical twins. Which, and this contributes to genetic vari variation and diversity in a species that it produces sexually. So this is meiosis. Um, I hope it was clear and thank you.